My name is Rhiannon Adams. I am a supporter of the Lowell Hospital Women's Society. For those of you who don't know, the Lowest Hole Hospital Women's Society uh, is part of the Royal Alex Hospital Foundation. Um, and we're a group of women who are from all stages and all ages of life. Uh, we're passionate about and committed to supporting excellence in women's healthcare and treatment. Um, and as part of the Women's Society, we raise awareness and funds, obviously for a variety of initiatives at the Lowell School Hospital for Women. We host our mind and body talks as an inclusive speaking series to engage and stay connected with our community. Before we dive into tonight's session, I want to go over how the evening is gonna work um, and to go over a couple of housekeeping items. So tonight we have Danielle Murray joining us for an interactive talk uh, that will focus on movement and mindfulness. Now, when we first discussed this topic, we thought, okay, probably a good one, um, being in a pandemic. Uh, and then it just so happened that obviously yesterday there were a bunch of announcements. And so it's turned out to be a, a really, I think, timely topic as well. So I am definitely personally very much looking forward to this, uh, this session tonight. So at the end of this session, there is going to be a question and answer period. Um, we're going to ask that um, that you stay muted and we're gonna, <laughs> excuse me, get questions in two different ways. One is uh, raising your hand. Uh, and if you choose that option, we'll make a note um, and then send you a direct message before, um, sort of when it's your turn. Uh, and then we'll unmute, unmute you and you're able to, to ask your question. Um, the other thing is to use the chat box. Uh, our experience in the chat box seems to be pretty popular, um, but either one is, is completely fine uh, and we support either one. And just to maybe let you sort of see how they work if you haven't had the opportunity, I know we've all used Zoom, but you know, I always forget where the raise the hand is. So if you go to participants, it should be at the bottom of your screen. Uh, and then you click on that. You can see invite, mute me, please don't mute me. Uh, and raise your hand. So um, if everyone can try, maybe I will try it as well. Here we are. Yes, we have some, perfect. All the people. <laughs> um, and if you aren't able to raise your hand, you can then lower your hand as well once you're done. Um, the other thing we can do is at the bottom. So beside participants, there's a chat little um, option there. If you click on that, it says to everyone, and then you can type your message in there. So um, if, again, you, you would like to, or anyone would like to, to type in something short, a word, maybe um, how you're feeling, or um, what you want to get out of this, uh, why you signed up for the session, um, and feel free to... to Is that man over here? Oh, hello. Okay. So, okay, so those are the two options. Um, if anyone has questions, obviously send, a, send, a, send something through the chat and we'll get to that. Um, two other quick housekeeping things. So on Zoom, there's two options uh, for the settings. So you can do gallery view or speaker view. Tonight, we are suggesting that you use the speaker view so we can focus on Danielle <laughs> the whole time. Um, and so it's you know easier to see. Uh, and then the last thing is with respect to the movement portion, I know Amber had put a little note in the chat box earlier, um, but you are welcome to use a mat and a towel um, if, if you want to. And if you need some more support, um, you can grab a pillow or a cushion. Either of those will work. Ooh, Danielle. Oh, she'll also be spotlighted. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Um, okay, so that's it for housekeeping. Uh, but before we get started, I do want to send our heartfelt thanks to Alberta Blue Cross because they continually support this series and they're the reason that we are able to, um, to have, have these. So thank you so, so much for your support. And I am going to 
turn it over briefly to Ashley, who's going to bring us greetings from Alberta Blue Cross. Hi everyone, I'm so happy to be here tonight and I can echo that after last night's announcement of the new restrictions, um, it's extra, I'm extra grateful for events uh, like this one. Finding ways to stay connected in what can be a lonely time for many is very important. Um, looking within and really listening to what our minds and bodies need is critical right now and this conversation couldn't have come at a better time. Alberta Blue Cross is really proud to support these events, so thank you all for having me here uh, virtually with you tonight. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you for being here. Um, and now I get to introduce our speaker this evening, um, Danielle Murray, as I said, she's all about communication. And in this day and age, you may think that communication is not something that needs to be refined, but Danielle believes that we are losing our ability to connect through communication. Communi does, communication, I'm sorry, doesn't apply only to others, but we must practice communication with the self. This connection requires us to be fully present and engaged in the practice of self-awareness. Learning to observe physical sensations, thoughts, and emotions are essential to fully understand the link between mind and body. The aim is to live in alignment with your, with your values, priorities, and intentions. When the head, the heart, and our actions are unified, it is alignment in action. Danielle is the founder of Rocket Yoga YEG. She is a proud community builder who believes in making wellness accessible. She's been teaching movement and mindfulness for over a decade. Her offerings include teacher training, workshops, retreats, and unique pop-up classes. Danielle is also passionate about, passionate about spending time with family and friends and a good boogie at the bower Sweating daily and belly laughs. Welcome, Danielle. You are still. Oh, there you are. There we go. I know it's it's all this technology. Um, thank you so much for the introduction. And I uh, I'm going to move back in a bit so you can see me a little bit better. But I just thought I'd do my intro up here where you can sort of see my face. Um, so I'm so excited to be here uh, and I just wanna thank uh, especially Crystal uh, for asking me to participate in this uh, evening with you all. Um, as was kind of mentioned in the introduction and my bio, I do feel that practices like this now more than ever are needed for people. Right now we're seeing a large amount of uh, mental health challenges related to our collective stress that we're undergoing as a society right now. Um, and it's to me, it's it's actually like a collective trauma that we're all facing. This is something that we're going through together, um, but it can still feel very isolating. So learning to have a relationship with the emotions that you're having in these moments as they come up uh, is very important and essential to maintaining our mental health. Because if we are not aware, sometimes these emotions and uh, these, uh, these feelings and thoughts can run away with us. Um, so that's kind of what our practice is about tonight is gaining a little bit more and, and rebuilding. To me, we need to rebuild a lot of the, uh, the connection between mind and body. Um, something that happens often in, in times like this, there's a lot of information um, coming at us constantly, right? It's all uh, it's all coming in and we're saying we're pushing out, but we're not taking a second to really feel, um, you know, you think you have the news, you've got social media, you've got what's going on with family and friends right now, and it's all in the air. Um, and so to be able to maintain steadiness, maintain stability, we need to pause once in a while and we need to turn off that constant outside coming in and just focus on what's going on in here. So that's kind of what we're gonna do tonight. Um, 
I, I, I wanted to throw up a poll and they'll, they'll help me by throwing up a poll and you guys can answer here. Uh, I was wondering who has practiced yoga? Is this your first time? Do you do it every day, once a week? Um, oh, I love this one, never. And I had to add the, I hate it because some people might just be here to support the cause and that's okay, but it's important to know that because then uh, part of this practice will be reflecting on what are the uncomfortable feelings you have when we do these uh, practices? Uh, so there's a question there, do, how often do you practice yoga and how often do you meditate? I'm gonna fill in mine too, I'm gonna participate. There we go. Uh, so that just kind of gives me a little information about you guys. Uh, and to tell you the truth um, for myself, and I, I've been teaching yoga over a decade, I think 13 years now, I've been practicing for 21 years. I started when I was 14. Um, when, when life gets really hectic and busy, sometimes I lose my practice and that, that stabilizing aspect. So it's important to have those conscious reminders and even friends that maybe help pull you back into those places of steadiness, those little routines. Um, I think some something that people have uh, in mind when they think about, oh, I'm not a yogi or a yoga practitioner. Oh, we got our results here. And I just have a quick question. Can everybody see these results or that's just for me? Everybody sees them? Yeah, so we've got a, we've got a good variety. Oh, but we have, we have no, I hate it. That, that's, a, that's good for me. <laughs> All right. Uh, where was I at? Sorry. Um, so what we're going to do uh, is, I think we're going to kind of get started now. Uh, I kind of forgot where I was going right, th right then and there, but when we talk about yoga, let's just talk about yoga a little bit, because we had a few that said they do, they don't. When we talk about yoga, um, I like to think about the word, and there's, there's a book called the Yoga Sutras, which is one of the first books on yoga. It's a very old book from India, and um, the word yoga, what does that mean? Uh, it has many translations, but one of them is union. Uh, some other translations are yoke or to unite. Um, but in this book called the Yoga Sutras, the first line of it is, and now yoga. And what I have, what I and some others translate that to mean is yoga is now. Yoga is the union between right now what we're experiencing right now. So when we're practicing yoga, you think often about like warrior pose or meditating on a mountaintop and ecstasy and everything is sunshine and rainbows and, and lollipops or rainbows and unicorns. But that's actually, to me, that's not what yoga is. Yoga is the feelings that you might think are negative or, you know, it, it's all the emotions, it's all the feelings, it's all the experiences. Yoga is experiencing whatever is unfolding within your body, within your mind at that moment. It is being present right here, right now, instead of stressing about the future or what happened in the past. Yoga is right here. And that's what the daily practice or whenever you practice in it, whenever you have the opportunity to practice, that's what we're looking for. We're looking to come back, to be right here, to be present within our bodies, within our minds, within our breath. Um, and so learning to do that is a skill. And so learning to uh, cultivate that skill so that you can come, <laughs> that you can come back to it over and over again. So when you have those days or those moments, like, you know, we might've had the last day or two where we feel caught up. We are able to steady ourselves in the midst of a storm. We are able to come back and breathe and be here, right? And that doesn't mean that we ignore problems or issues, but we are able to navigate them with a little bit more ease, right? We are steady but we have ease to move with whatever will come. So let's begin our practice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move back to my mat um, and I want you to get into a position that's comfortable. We're gonna start with how, the flow of the evening is we're gonna start with a little bit of self-awareness 
breathing, a meditation. And then from there, we'll get into a little bit of movement. Um, something that I like to say before we start any of the physical practice or the, uh, the physical yoga movements is that this practice is for everybody. So some of you, we are all built differently. We all have different bodies. Some of you may have, you know, injuries or uh, obstacles or challenges or different ways of moving. They're not necessarily wrong or good or bad. Um, they're just different. So as we move, I will provide lots of options for you that I will say you can do this or you can do this. And part of the practice of yoga and being right here right now is taking those options that I provide you that I say, if this feels good, do this, try this, is trying them, but actually taking a second to, to notice how does this feel? Is this right for me? And then making a conscious decision to move with what feels good to you, right? So I don't like to work in levels. I just like to work on this is what feels good to me today. So that's what I'm doing today. And it's okay to find those boundaries and edges of challenge, right? You feel like you need more challenge. Maybe you try something a little different. Um, but as we move, those, those options will be there. If there comes to a point in the practice that you feel like, you know what, I just need to sit and relax, continue to stay with us, but keep breathing, right? Stay within the moment, focus on whatever sensations physically or emotionally are coming up as we move, okay? And we're all still practicing together. All right, so with that, we're gonna get started. So I want you to find a, a spot on your mat. I'm gonna move back to my mat and then we'll get rolling. Oh. So you can uh, find yourself a comfortable seated position. We're just gonna do a moment, a, a few minutes of meditation here. Now, uh, if sitting cross-legged, uh, my husband hates when I uh, make him sit cross-legged. He's like, that's not comfortable for normal people. So if this is not comfortable for you, that's okay. Maybe you lean up against the wall with your legs stretched out in front of you. I uh, have a little support. Or maybe you plant your feet um, up and find a spot to sit like that. As well as meditating in a chair is great. The one thing I'll recommend at this point is don't lay down because then that kind of encourages us to shut off and completely let go and relax. In this first meditation, we're focusing on that awareness. So just find yourself that comfortable seat, allow your hands to fall in a comfortable position. And let's all together, let's lift our shoulders up high into the air, take a big breath in, and just big exhale out your mouth. <sighs> let them fall down. And allow your eyes to softly sink shut. And if that brings up any anxiety, maybe just find one point of gaze. So a soft gaze down towards the ground where you can't be distracted. Whatever works for you, eyes closed or soft gaze. Begin to become more aware of your surroundings. So take a moment to listen. Perhaps you hear the hum of your home, sounds outside the space you're in, and then start to draw your awareness onto your mat and the four corners of your mat. Within the four corners of your mat, feel your seat and where it connects to the earth below you. And if someone has their computer uh, not on mute, if you could please mute, that would be great. Sorry, friends. <laughs> Feeling your seat, connecting down. Feel where your legs touch the mat. And start to notice the natural curvature of your spine from your tailbone. Notice the way that your spine extends up through the crown, just naturally, not manipulating your body, not making any changes. 
becoming aware of how your shoulders fall, your head. Feel the natural flow of your breath, how the belly rises and falls as you inhale and softly exhale. Perhaps even feeling the gentle effect of the breath as you inhale, the ribs spread gently. As you exhale, they draw back together and soften down. And slowly begin to create a little more space in the body for breath. So noticing that natural posture Beginning from the tail, can you start to extend some length through to the crown of your head? So start to sit a little bit taller. Maybe the crown extends up towards the ceiling. The shoulders slide over top of the pelvis. Ever so slightly tucking the chin down towards the notch and the collarbones, lengthen the back of the neck. And then start to deepen your breath. And if you can breathe through the nose, take a nice deep inhale through your nose, fill your belly, ribs, chest. And as you exhale, belly draws back to spine, ribs, and chest. Inhale, feel your body expand, belly, ribs, and chest. And for some of us, if you're more tactile, maybe you pit, place a hand on your belly and your chest feel. We'll take three more rounds of breath, feeling that full expansion. One more, full inhale. Now maintaining that steady breath, keep it flowing. Draw your attention to any thoughts that are flowing through your mind. Many people think meditation is the absence of thought, but the absence of thought means we are no longer alive. So that's kind of a, a, a not, not a great goal, I would say. Um, so, so notice those thoughts. Become aware of them. Where does your mind go when you're still? Perhaps to your day or things you have to do. And so notice if your thoughts are drawing you away from this space. And gently bring yourself back by focusing on the sensation of your breath. Just become more aware in this moment if there are any emotions present for you. Rather than labeling whatever emotion is there, good or bad, just notice it. Notice how it feels in your body. And perhaps there's that sense of ease and contentment. But if there's discomfort, know that that is okay too and just become a little bit more curious about whatever it is you're experiencing right here, right now. And as we sit in this place of stillness and deep awareness, calling to a mind perhaps an intention. And I'd like to share a very special intention as we sit and as you sit in your stillness. A thought for our practice this evening. And if something else guides you, feel free to focus on that. These are the words of Richard uh, Wagamis, an Indigenous Canadian author. I am my silence. I am not the busyness of my thoughts or the daily rhythm of my actions. I am not the stuff that constitutes my world. I am not my talk, I am not my actions. I am my silence. I am the consciousness that perceives all these things. 
when I go to my consciousness, that great pool of silence that observes the intricacies of life, I am aware that I am me. I take a little time each day to sit in silence so that I can move outward in balance to the great clamor of living. I'm taking this moment and this very special time in your silence, in your experience, feeling this moment for you. I'm beginning to explore a little bit more outside of this sensation of stillness. Can you maintain the same awareness you have in this moment? And if you've lost that breath, begin to deepen it. Taking a full inhale through the nose. We'll take a big sigh all together. Deep inhale through the nose. <sighs> Two more just like that. <sighs> Last one. The next exhale that leaves the mouth as if you're fogging up glass. Deep inhale through the nose. So this is called ocean breath, a steady breath. Deep inhale through your nose. Out the mouth, fog up glass. One more time, inhale through the nose. Exhale, mouth closed, same sound. Another inhale through the nose. Same sound, mouth closed. Maintain that breath, keep it flowing. Inhale. And exhale. And from here, begin to bring movement back to your body by bringing some movement into your fingers. So maybe just starting from the fingers and rotating into the wrist, maintaining that breath, inhaling and exhaling through the nose with that slight sound in the back of the throat. As you exhale, maybe bowing your chin, you can softly blink open your eyes, at your gaze, good. So just rolling the wrists, we'll slowly release them down to the lap and let's inhale. Lift the shoulders up towards the ears. As you exhale, broaden the chest, slide them down the back. Good, nice big circles with those shoulders. Inhale, exhale. And this is also a very safe breath for us in this day and age. It's, it avoids breathing moistly on others. I know you're all laughing, I can't hear you, but I'm sure you are. <laughs> Good. The only problem with Zoom classes, my terrible jokes, I can't revel in them. Opposite direction with the shoulders. And then slowly allow one more rotation and allow the shoulders to release back down. Exhaling. Good. And then from here, inhale, reach your arms up high and try to extend up through your fingertips as you exhale all the way back down. Turn the palms face up, inhale, reach up. Exhale, part the air, hands come back down. One more time, inhale, reach up. Exhale, part the air back down. This time as we inhale and reach up, starting to move from the torso, as you exhale, your right hand comes down onto your left knee. Coming into a twist, your left hand comes back behind you. Take a full breath in, sit a little bit taller, and as you exhale through the ribs, see if you can twist a millimeter deeper. 
your hips stay stable. Take a full inhale through the nose, sit a little bit taller. Last exhale, twist a millimeter deeper. Opposite side, inhale, come back through center, reach the arms high. Exhale, left hand comes down onto the right knee. And as you settle in, feel the effect of your breath. With each inhale, maybe see if you can find a little extra space, length, space and length. And as you exhale and that breath leaves the body, see if you can take that millimeter, twist a little bit deeper. One more breath, take a nice inhale. And exhale a millimeter deeper. Inhale, come back up through center, reach high. Exhale, releasing the hands down. You're either going to sit on the hip and swing the legs back around, or just come up and over the shins, finding a tabletop position. And I'll turn sideways on my mat so you can see me now. So from here, we're going to plant the fingers beneath the, the hands beneath the shoulders. The knees come beneath the hips. Now, if this is hard on your knees, if you have any knee tender, ten, uh, tenderness or issues, you can use a cushion or you can double up your mat underneath your knees. If going on your knees is too much, you can always do this seated with your hands on your legs somehow. So from here in your tabletop position, as you inhale, drop down your belly, raise your tail and lift your chin up towards the ceiling. As you exhale, chin tucks down towards the notch in your collarbones, towards your chest. Upper back spreads wide, shoulder blades apart. Inhale, belly drops, tail raises, crown lifts. Exhale, chin draws towards the chest, pubic bone tucks forward. Now nice and slow, take the full inhale to transition. See the shoulders slide away from the ears, down the back, collarbones broad. Exhale, draw yourself in, chin to chest. From here on your next inhale, coming back nice and slow, find a tabletop position. As you exhale, draw your knees wide, your big toes together, and then slowly start to draw your hips back to your heels. And then extending the arms out, finding a child's pose. Now, if your head reaches the mat, you can bring your head to the mat. If it doesn't get all the way there, maybe you stack your fists, forehead rest there. Child's pose. Now, at any time during our practice, if you feel like you want to rest or just take a moment, this is a good place to come or just find a seated position and again, follow with your breath. All right, so from here, on your next inhale, if your hands are back, extending them back forward, come back to tabletop position, extend my mat, good. Then as you exhale, tuck your toes under. Take an inhale here and push into the floor, spread your shoulder blades apart and wrap your elbows back towards your knees. Then as you exhale, start to tuck your toes under beneath you and then see if you can push and hover your knees just above your mat. Take another inhale here. Then as you exhale, start to draw your chest back towards your thighs and your hips back towards the ceiling. Now my knees are still quite bent. Don't feel like you have to straighten your knees. If you're feeling really stuck in your shoulders, Try to walk your hands a little bit wider and then grip down through the tips of the fingers, press down through the knuckles and the palms of the hands. And then maybe start to find a little length in your legs. And then you can play again with your feet. So maybe we bend the knees back and forth, sinking heels towards the mat. And this is a moment you might over be overthinking right now. Oh, where do I put my hands? Where do I put my feet? It doesn't matter. Notice what you feel in your body. Maybe you can sway your hips to side to side. Notice how that makes your body feel. Maybe twisting and sinking one heel at a time. Maybe moving forward and backward. So what I'm gonna invite you to do for the next few breaths is just explore movement here. 
Maybe you twist your knees side to side. Mm -hmm. Maybe you extend a leg up in the air. There's no right or wrong here. I just want you to feel what movement in this position feels like in your body. Let's take three more breaths here. And on your next exhale, bending the knees, set the gaze forward to the hands, step or walk forward to your hands. And you can take all the time you need. You don't have to hop right up in one step. And then bend your knees deeply. So get a really nice deep knee bend and then let your body hang. So don't think that you need to be standing. Straight legs are not at all something that is necessary when I'm teaching, never. And just let your body hang and become really heavy. Feel the weight of your body pressing down into your feet. And then from here, push into the ground. And as you inhale, slowly roll up the spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. Taking all the time you need until your shoulders stack on top of your hips, your head on top of your shoulders. And just allow your eyes to softly blink open. Good. Now we're going to move it through uh, some sun salutations. So stepping up towards the top of your mat. Now again, we're going to start a little bit slower and then I might try to challenge you just a little bit. And just remember these challenges are always for fun and to notice what the experience of doing something new feels like for you. So the top of your mat, your arms come alongside your body. Lift your toes, spread them wide like fingers and root them down into the mat below you. Then push down through the feet, wipe them apart as if you were trying to split the mat in half with your feet and draw energy up the legs. Activate the thighs, finding a neutral pelvis, pubic bone and hip bones on the same plane. Inhale, crown comes up to the ceiling, shoulders slide down to the back, down the back, chest broadens. Mountain pose, Tadasana. So feeling that sense of steadiness and ease here. Take a big breath together, deep inhale. Exhale. Push the feet into the floor and inhale. Raise the arms up, reach towards the ceiling. As you exhale, hinge from the hips, gentle bend to the knees, fold forward. Inhale, push into the shins or thighs. Spine lengthens, crown reaches forward. Exhale, then see if you can hinge from the waist. Fold again. Let's do that one more time. You can keep the knees bent. Inhale, pushing into the floor, shins or thighs. Lengthen your spine. Have a nice long back. And as you exhale, hinge from the hips, bend the knees, plant the hands, and take a step back towards a plank position. Drop down your knees and even if you, you know, go to the gym every day, drop down your knees. We're going to be here a minute. <laughs> From here, as you inhale, push your upper back wide, shoulder blades apart, just like before. Then wipe the hands apart as if you were trying to split the mat in half. As you exhale, feel your elbows wrap back towards your knees. So turn the elbows back and then start to activate the muscles in your in your upper back, the big muscles called the lats. See if you can start to feel them engage and pull. Then from here, take an inhale, set your gaze forward slightly. As you exhale, belly is firm. Now, if you wanna challenge yourself a little more, tuck the toes, lift the knees. You can also stay down on the knees with me. Take one more inhale here, hold that engagement. And as you exhale, slowly lower all the way down to the belly. Releasing all 10 toes. Inhale, peel the chest up off the mat. Use the strength in the low back. See if you can use that low back strength to lift you. Exhale, heart comes down. One more time. Inhale, use the strength in the back to lift. Neck is long. Exhale, soften down. This time, one more time. Exhale, engage the belly. Inhale, lift one more time. Strong belly and back. Exhale, heart releases down. From here, tuck the toes under. Inhale, 
press up to your tabletop position and either lifting the hips up and back find downward facing dog or if you'd like to modify downward facing dog this time extending the arms out keeping up on the knees this is called puppy dog pose and we'll hold here for three breaths and i am going to be quiet because now i want you to observe what the thoughts are what emotions is this bringing up what sensations are you feeling in your body Three breaths, check in. Can you hear your breath? On your next exhale, bend the knees, look forward to the hands and either taking a walk or maybe this time you take a big step up, feet come to hands. Inhale, spine lengthens, crown forward. Exhaling, hinge from the hips, fold. Inhale, raise up, reach. Exhale, release through heart center. Again, inhale, raise. Exhale, fold. A little bit faster this time. Inhale, spine lengthens. Exhale, bending the knees, plant the hands. Take a step back from the knees or toes lower. Inhale, either lifting up using the strength in your low back or push into the hands, upward facing dog, shoulders roll back. Push into the feet. As you exhale from the knees or pulling over the toes, hips up and back, downward facing dog, breathe. Remember the legs don't have to be straight. The heels don't have to touch. Find lots of length in your spine. Upper back is wide. Last breath here. Next exhale, bend your knees, look forward. Step will walk up to your hands, however you get there. Inhale, everyone can have a different way, lengthen your spine. Exhale, hinge from the hips, fold forward. Push into the feet, inhale, hands raise up, reach high. As you exhale, hands come down through your heart. From here, we'll take a big step back. So inhale, lift the right foot. As you exhale, take a big step back on your mat. And if you're turned around facing the camera in the wrong way, just, just face the long side of your mat. That works, whichever foot. Start with your hands on your hips. And we're gonna have the toes either slightly turned in. And for some of you, depending on your hip joint, might be a little bit out, whichever feels better for you. And then from there, I want you to give your knees just a little bit of a gentle bend, okay? Sometimes when we lock, our pelvis won't move. So just check and don't worry, the camera's not on, I can't see what you're doing. So maybe just give your pelvis a little bit of movement back and forth because to have that mobility there, that's what helps us fold forward. So what I want you to do is tuck your pelvis forward so your pubic bone is up. And then I want you to do the opposite direction. So pubic bone comes down butt comes back, ribs come in. Take an inhale here. Then as you exhale, hinging from the hips, fold forward, hands can come to shins. Maybe they come to the ground. Maybe you walk your hands towards your feet. Wherever you are, letting your head hang. If you wanna find length in your legs, you can. And then from there, take a few breaths. So now I want you to notice while we're working in this fold, are you really forcing and pulling? Or can you sensitively navigate that stretch, coming right to the edge, that place between too much and not enough? Can you find it? Notice if the weight is in your heels, moving it forward to the balls of your feet. Take two more breaths here.
And then from there, gentle bend to the knees to start. Let everything get heavy and inhale, roll up your spine, vertebrae by vertebrae. So you come to the top, exhale. Take a big breath there. Sometimes that breath can uh, get away from you, especially if you get a little lightheaded. So just take a second, make sure you're stable there. From here, begin by pivoting the right foot towards the back of your mat. As you inhale, extend the arms out. And as you exhale, gentle bend to that front knee and see if you can start to settle in, warrior two. But we're not just gonna stay here. Inhale, lift out an inch. Do you have a little bit more space? Do you feel that you're feeling challenged? Maybe you lengthen the legs a little bit more. Exhale, come back down. We'll lift out one more time. Inhale, gentle lift. Exhale, settle in and squeeze your legs. Pull them towards center. Take three breaths. Feel the power of your thighs pulling in, stacking shoulders on top of hips. Find one point of gaze. From here, feel like you can push down through the ball of that foot. Keep squeezing the back leg and inhale, finding length through the legs. Now, if you've extended out pretty far, you might need to shorten your stance. And as you exhale, starting to feel that you're extending that upper body forward, pull the back hip back and start to reach out. Take an inhale here. As you exhale, slowly allow the hand that is closest to that leg to come down. Maybe your top hand stays on your hip. Maybe you reach up high. And then notice if, just like when we did that twist at the beginning of class, if you can start to feel your left shoulder stack on top of your right. See if you can feel that rotation just spin open from the upper body. And take two more breaths here. And if sometimes if you have a block or something and you wanna go higher, that's helpful too. Feel free to use any props. Last breath. Good. From here, as if I was pulling on that top arm, imagine my hand on your wrist, and we're going to pull up for the count of three. Slowly lift. Inhale. One, two, nice and slow. Three, don't escape it yet. Take an inhale when you get to the top. As you exhale, pivot the foot. Good. From here, inhale, lift the chest and roll your shoulders back. Broaden it and open. Exhale, ribs come down, belly tucks back. So feel your abdominals stabilize. Pivot the foot at the top of the mat. So left foot or whichever one pivots forward. Take an inhale, extend your arms. And as you exhale, sink down. Now again, lifting out. If you have a little bit more space, take an inhale. Maybe you lengthen, maybe you stay right where you are. Is it good? Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Little lift. About an inch. More taken. Otherwise, stay. For three. Is there a question there or an issue? Maybe not. <laughs> Two. Good. Find one more breath. Pushing down to that front foot, inhale, lengthen back up. As you exhale, again, pivoting the feet. Now from here, draw your hands to your hips and we're gonna slowly work the feet in. I like this, this is just kind of like a little tap dance. This is a fun transition. Work the feet into center. Awesome. And from here, give a gentle bend to the knees. And we're gonna inhale, reach the hands up. As you exhale, interlace the fingers behind your back. Now, you can start with bent elbows. If interlacing the fingers like that doesn't work, grab onto your pants. <laughs> and what, like, why get these stretchy pants if you can't use them for something? Grab onto them. But the main thing that we're looking for is to open up our chest. So broadening your collarbones. Maybe you have the fingers interlaced. Or you can have elbows bent or straight. Keep the knees bent. Inhale, keep the chest open. If this feels good, stay here. 
If you want to take it a little further, exhaling, hinging from your hips, maybe your arms come off your back. Keep your collarbones broad as best you can. Take three more breaths here. Maybe you fold a little deeper for that last one. Good. If your arms are lifted off your back, slowly release them. Inhale, raise up, just down. Let's reach our arms high. One more time. Exhale, releasing them down. Good. So moving our way back down onto the mat. Again, you can face the top or the side. I just, I will turn all around so you guys can see me. We're gonna to start to come down to the mat to do some poses on the ground before we finish with the meditation. So from here, push down through the feet and stand up nice and tall, nice length through your spine. Take an inhale here. And now this is all about awareness and adjustment. We have expectations of where this is gonna go, but this is the practice of seeing if you can adjust your expectations based on the feedback given. Push into the feet, inhale tall. And as you exhale, starting to bend the knees, sinking down into a yogi squat. Now, if your heels start to lift and they have to lift up to come down, to come a little lower, that's okay, lift your heels. Maybe you have to release your hands, walking your feet in. Maybe your feet stay flat. So going down until you find your version of a yogi squat, you might be a little higher or lower, but whatever position you're in, I don't care what it looks like, but can you feel that your thighs activate? So turn on your glutes and see if you can pull your knees away from one another. Can you feel that your collarbones lift up even a millimeter higher? And then can you feel a little extra length through your spine and we'll hold for three, for two, and one. Now we're close-ish to the ground. So for some of you, you might be able to just sit right on down to your bum. Others, you might have to swing your legs around, finding a way to your seat in whichever way you need to. Don't worry, I'm not watching. I can't see that far. <laughs> and then from here, we'll come to our seat with the soles of the feet together. Take an inhale, sit nice and tall. As you exhale, this is gonna be another practice in awareness. See if you can start to lift and your hands can be either at your heart or down beside you. Exhale, firm your belly. Then from here, we're gonna inhale. See if we can lift our left foot off the ground. As you exhale, extend it out in front. And if you need to use your hands to support your leg, you can as well. Take an inhale here, then as you exhale, can you lean to your right hip and draw your left heel to meet your left hip? So now your right foot is into your left thigh. So this is just a little bit of an exercise in mobility. Take an inhale here, nice and tall. And as you exhale, slowly work forward. And this is called deer pose. Now you might feel a stretch in your right hip here. If you'd like a little bit more, you can also extend your left leg straight back for full pigeon pose. Whew. I always know when I've been sitting at my desk too much because my body definitely talks to me in this pose. So notice what your body is saying. Do you need to stay low? Do you wanna come high? Take a few breaths there. And now whatever position you chose, try the opposite position for a breath or two and just observe the shift in sensation. On your next inhale, if you're down, come up. If you're up, just stay right where you are. Depending on where you are, if your leg is back, exhale, draw it back up. 
And from here, we're all back to that deer pose. Take an inhale at center, hands at heart or down beside you. As you exhale, now we're gonna squeeze the glute of the leg that's down. Inhale, see if you can extend it all the way around in front. Exhale, slowly release it down to the mat. Take an inhale, opposite arm from the leg that is extended reaches back behind you as if you're gonna lean on it and chill. But we're not gonna chill, we're gonna inhale, push. Exhale, belly firm. Inhale, we're gonna lift up onto the shin of that bottom leg and see if we can reach out, spin open. I'm just lifting those hips, creating a little extension in the hip flexor. And as you exhale, slowly sit back down. Good. So we had the left leg out, that's gonna come back in. Now we're gonna do it all again on the other side. So again, sitting in Baddha Konasana, butterfly, cobbler's pose. From here, see if you can start to really breathe deeply again. If you've lost that flow of steady breath, and let's actually just take a moment to pause before the other side. And observe the difference between the right and left side of your body how they might feel different in this moment. Instead of thinking ahead of what's to come, drop into your body right now and track every sensation as we come through the movement. So from here, if your eyes are closed, lift your gaze. Inhale, slowly lift that right leg this time. And as you exhale, kick the heel forward. Take an inhale here, and as you exhale, lean onto the left hip and then see if you can start to draw that right heel in towards your glute. Left foot is into right thigh. From here, if you wanna extend the right leg straight back for pigeon here, you can. Otherwise, stay in deer pose. Inhale, sit nice and tall. As you exhale, maybe you start to work forward or maybe you stay tall. Whichever sensation you're looking at exploring right now. We'll pause for a few breaths. And as you pause for these few breaths again, notice how the posture affects maybe your hip flexor on the right side or your left hip. Notice if you can maybe sit taller if that's what you're focusing on, if you're Fold it forward. Can you bring the weight out of your hands to your hips? And these questions are just questions to draw you back to your body. Whatever you're feeling, connect with that sensation. And for the last couple breaths, we'll change position. So if you're down, up. If you're up, down. Feel the opposite. Slowly on your next inhale. Raise back up. Or down, down or up. Find your way back to the top. If your back leg is extended, sit to the left hip and bring the right knee back up to deer pose. Then again, hands at heart or on the ground, whatever works. We're gonna inhale, lift that right knee, squeeze the right hip and glute to lift it. Then as you exhale, see if you can start to extend it out in front of you. Take another inhale here, hold, sit tall. And as you exhale, that foot slowly releases down. Right leg is extended, left comes behind you. Now again, I like to lean into it first. I like to do the chill first so I really get that foundation, but then push the floor away. Push it away through your shoulders so you have space in your neck. Then from here, activate, inhale, lift the hips and start to reach back. And then maybe spinning open through the chest, press the hips forward. 
and hold. Take a deep inhale. Feel all that space in your side body. And then as you exhale, slowly come back around the way you came. Beautiful. And then from there, we'll extend both legs out. Good. And from the legs extended out, you're gonna just, and what I recommend, because we're gonna move towards a little final relaxation and meditation. Um, just have, if you have a sweater or anything close by, grab it before we lay down. And I'll just wait a second while you do that. Um, and then come into a position with your feet planted. We're gonna draw our hands onto our shins first. Now from this position, when you're ready, inhale, pull on your knees, lift your chest up, lifting your heart and your chin. And then as you exhale, chin tips to chest. Now keep that depth, that little bit of a lean back but now inhale, see if you can engage your belly, lift your chest. So you've got a little bit of that lean back going, but now our heart is lifted, our core is active. So maybe you stay there holding onto your knees. If this is enough of a challenge, stay right here. Maybe you extend the arms straight out in front, or maybe you start to hover the feet. This is called Navasana or boat pose. Now, if that feels good with the feet lifted, if it's slightly too much, you can also grab your legs or option to extend the legs straight with the arms extended and hold for three. And I've definitely been taking a little pandemic break because my legs are shaking too. My core is shaking. For two, what do you feel? You can do anything for another 15 seconds. Last breath here. Good. Now you can either tuck your chin into your chest and start to extend, or if you've got that position where you're grabbing your knees, begin to slowly roll down your back. But we're slowly going to make our way down onto the mat. We are going to keep breathing the whole time. Good. And arriving down on the ground, plant the feet. And just draw your knees into your chest and give yourself a gentle rock from side to side. And if you can't reach the knees in the chest, you can always just kind of bend them up and give yourself some circles. One direction and the other, or again, giving yourself a nice hug, whatever feels good. Wonderful. And then planting the feet, bringing them about a comfortable hip distance apart. And you know, we spend so much time hunched over computers and rounded like this that when I practice yoga, I really like to focus on creating a little more space there. So we'll do one last posture here before we finish our final relaxation. So tuck your shoulder blades under, so like your chest is a little bit more broad, arms draw alongside you, feet plant. From here, turn your toes slightly in so that the sides of your feet or parallel to your mat, and then start to tilt your pubic bone up towards the ceiling, so that tilted pelvis. Then inhale, start to raise the hips, working up towards the shoulders, and then when you arrive at the shoulders, maybe you push down a little bit more through the feet. Hands can stay on the mat, maybe they draw the hips. And then let's just breathe as deeply as we can. Three breaths here. On your next exhale, slowly releasing your hips down. And then we're gonna plant the feet a little bit wider. Take a breath here, full inhale. Out the mouth, sigh, exhale. And then just take a moment for any extra movement you need. So maybe I like to windshield wiper my knees side to side. Take a few breaths there. And then slowly start to extend up the legs. Now, again, if comfortable, you can always put a pillow under your knees. Tuck your shoulder blades under to broaden your chest and allow the palms to fall face up. Lengthen and soften the back of the neck along the earth, completely releasing the weight of the head. 
and allow the eyes to softly sink shut. And again, if eyes shut is uncomfortable for you, you can always find a soft point of gaze, something steady to hold. And then again, we'll take a few big exhales. Imagine the breath filling your body as if you were stepping into a warm bath from the tips of your toes with your inhale. So with your inhale, the breath fills the body from the toes, up the thighs, hips, pelvis, belly, chest, throat, down to the fingertips, up to the crown of the head. Exhale, slowly release. And again, allow the inhale to fill every part of your body. Exhale, slowly release. Three more breaths there. And if you can imagine each exhale, grounding you down deeper and deeper into the support and stability of the mat that is holding you. And perhaps feeling the warmth of the space that surrounds you. And again, just as we began, observe what's outside you first, those little sounds. Notice them, acknowledge them. And then be aware if you can draw your attention to your body, tracing around the outline of your body and where it touches the ground. And then drawing your awareness to physical sensations. Notice how perhaps They've shifted since we began our practice. How do you feel different now than you did a short hour ago? Perhaps there's a little bit more space between those thoughts. Notice any shifts in emotions. And then drawing your mind, perhaps, to the sensation of breath, allow that to ground you. Inevitably, other things will arise as we rest in this stillness. But continue over and over to come back to your breath as you rest. Shavasana.
slowly begin to draw your awareness back to this moment, back to the experience of being within your body right here, right now. Become curious about thoughts in your mind, emotions filling your body and your heart. And the practice of yoga is not about labeling those emotions. The practice of yoga being right now is learning to acknowledge and receive the experience authentically, to let go of resistance. Whatever you're feeling, welcoming it in, say hello. Can you observe the smallest detail now in this heightened state of awareness? As we come back into our bodies, begin with the smallest little movement of deepened breath. Feel the deepening of that breath invigorate your body. And allow that energy to start to draw in any movement that feels right for you. I'm not even going to label where it is. But begin to bring movement back to your body in a way that feels good to you today. And then from that movement, allow it to extend out and magnify. Maybe it moves into a nice big stretch, taking a deep inhale. And then as you exhale in your own time, perhaps you make your way to your side. Take a moment there. We don't need to rush, we don't need to hurry. There's enough of that. That feels complete. Slowly make your way up towards your comfortable seated position. And as you find your seat, Again, observing the easing quality of your breath. Before we release for a moment to chat, just a short exercise. Starting to find a steady rhythm to your breath. This is the simplest of practices, but it can be the most grounding. There's beauty in simplicity. So taking some deeper inhales through your nose and mouth. And again, I'm not gonna instruct you on how long, but start to find a rhythm. Maybe inhaling to the count of four, pausing at the peak of your breath for a moment, and then exhaling to the count of four, pausing, and the breath is completely released for a moment. 
Maybe it's longer, maybe it's shorter. If it brings out any anxiety with those pauses, shorten the pauses and maybe it's just a brief moment. But we'll take a few rounds of breath. Those inhales counting to the top and evenly counting to the bottom. Pauses in between. Maybe even lengthening those pauses to match the length of the inhale and the exhale. Last two rounds. Together, let's take a deep inhale. Exhale out the mouth. And again, observe any shifts in mind, body, or emotions. As we bring our, class, our practice to a close, I'd like to just offer you some words. Um, that have inspired me in relation to these practices specifically. And I, I personally am one of those people that tries to look to perfect a skill or, you know, do something really well. But for me, my yoga practice is an opportunity to start to release that desire. So this is, these are some beautiful words by Parker J. Palmer. By choosing integrity, I become more whole. But wholeness does not mean perfection. It means becoming more real by acknowledging the whole of who I am. Before we release this moment, take a second to acknowledge yourself for your practice, for coming here for this moment, taking this time for yourself tonight. And I thank you all so much for sharing this practice. Namaste. Okay. Hi. Thank you so, so much. All right. Or like, let me move this a little closer here. Oh, and I see some friends. I see some friends. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Maureen. Um, okay. So, so I think we're going to take some questions. Um, if if anybody has any questions, um, I also can uh, let you know a few other things about. Um, I've been uh, I teach yoga at local yoga studios here um, at uh, Meta and at Yoga Life South. Um, my my one thing that I'd love to tell you guys about that is our uh, local fitness and wellness studios really need support. So if you guys are looking to do some Christmas shopping, I just love to put my little pitch to shop local and, and support our local businesses. <laughs> Does Absolutely. anyone have any questions? <laughs> um, I can start off with a question if that's okay. I cannot hear, yeah. just one sec. Can't hear you, Rhiannon. Uh, oh. Can anyone hear me? I can hear you. Nice. It was I turned off my volume because my emails were coming in. 
Okay. Um, so I, then you missed my saying thank you and how lovely oh. that was. Oh, I feel much more centered now. So thank you so, so much. Um, I will start with a question. There were lots of um, in the chat box saying thank you. Um, but I, if you don't mind, um, I have a couple of, of yeah. questions. Okay. Um, and other people, please join in as well. Uh, so m one of my, I guess, main questions is how long do you need to meditate for, for it to be beneficial? Like, do I need to set aside 20 minutes? Do I need to set aside 45 minutes? Can I do it in five minutes? Um, I feel like, I feel like uh, my friend Kathy would be really good at, at answering this question um, because she's, she's quite experienced. Um, but, you know, for me, the, my personal uh, approach to meditation is some of us need a structured meditation. Some of us need that I am going to take 20 minutes or five minutes a day or whatever it may be. Um, but I think for, for a lot of people uh, that are, especially when you're just starting out, that can be a little bit too much. And taking that can, can kind of get you out of the habit. So for myself, when I really started my meditation practice, what I started with was, you know, I'm going to give myself this five minutes when I get into get into bed, which, you know, uh, is a, an interesting place to start meditation, but I, I was going to take that time to breathe. Some people do like bedtime meditations or, or listen to meditations like that. Um, but as well, I would do it during the day. So something for myself, uh, I have severe anxiety. Um, and so I would take time when I found myself reaching a place that was a lot of tension and stress and I would stop and I would take you know one of the practices that we did today one of the breath practices and I would do it for two minutes for five minutes and I saw benefit I see benefits from that right and so I think it's um letting go of what we think meditation should look like and uh seeing how we can bring it into our lives and then from there once you form this this habit of taking that time and start to integrate it into your life, then a more formal meditation practice may evolve, right? And then you might want to say, you know what, I'm going to start to sit uh, like my friend Andrea, she just took her meditation, meditation, meditation teacher training. And she has like a formal practice of every day she gets up and she sits and she likes that structure for herself. So yeah. is that, does that, no, that make sense answer? Yeah. No, it's really helpful because I, you know, I guess part of it is like, can you do it anywhere? And you're sort of saying that, yes, like you can take a few minutes and meditate, like doing certain breathing exercises. Um, there is another question down here, similar question, um, mm -hmm. but to do with yoga, how often should someone try to build doing yoga into their fitness and movement schedules? Um. So this is, this is a good question. And I am, the way I teach is very much that having formal practices is very good, but also I am a mom, I have a full-time job. And so I also appreciate that other people have that too. And I think the best way to ensure that you actually do it is to um, fit it in where it works in your life. Uh, so for myself, I know I feel best when I'm doing a physical practice like three or four times a week as well as my other wellness uh, practices. Uh, that's not including meditation, but like physical yoga, if we're talking physical yoga. Um, some people will like to do it every day, but I think to see a benefit you sh from, from doing some sort of physical yoga practice, you need to do it more than once a week. Like I would say, you know, if you do it two times a week or three times a week to start. And that doesn't mean an hour long class. Like if you go to the gym and work out and then you do a few uh, sun salutations or um, kind of more of the yoga stretching and breathing, you'll see a benefit still, right? So you can include it with your other movement practices and you'll still see that gain in mobility because that's a big part of it uh, with, with physical yoga and, and movement. If we're talking about mobility, when you don't use it, you lose it, right? 
So when we move, we're breaking up, we're stopping our tissues from really getting stiff and actually solidifying. So the more we have that motion, the more lotion there is. <laughs> That's awesome. I know when I start, I haven't, I mean, I haven't done that three kids and full-time job. And so I totally trying to find some time. Um, but when we were first sort of like twisting, I was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, okay, I have another question. I, can you do meditation badly? Or like, is there a good way and a bad way? I know we don't like labels. Like, so, <laughs> so what, I guess I guess the question is like, you know, should I be concerned or afraid? Like if I want to take five minutes, am I going to do a bad job and then like wasted my 10 minutes of my life? Like, is that a, is that a thing? Or if you just take the time, you will do it. You'll get some benefit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is a good, it's a good question though. Like I'm like, I, I know the answer in there. I see people that know me are kind of giggling because they know what I'm going to say. It is never wasted. It is never wasted because what we really talked about um, a lot tonight was the opportunity to check in with what you're experiencing. Does that mean it's always enjoyable? <laughs> I would be lying if I told you every meditation practice is enjoyable for me. Sometimes I, I mentioned resistance. Sometimes I have moments where I can't shut down my brain and it's just a, no, a moment to kind of notice, oh my gosh, I am going too fast. I need to create some space because there's abs even when I'm still, there's no space there, you know, you have, you, there's your mind won't stop. And so being aware that that's happening to you is a really important part of breaking that cycle of doing too much, right. Of overdoing it. Right. It seems if you're feeling like that, there's gotta be a reason. Right. And so even it might feel like not the greatest, like a bad meditation, it's important to remember that it isn't bad because you connected with your experience and that's what yoga is. Yeah. Cause I think that those are sort of two things in my mind that like, A, I don't have the time and B, what if I do a not a good job? Like it, those are sort of those fear things that sometimes hold us back, I think. Um, there is another question that's come in. Do you include words of affirmation in your routine? Um, and then any tips on this? Thank you. Thanks, Madison. Um, absolutely. So when we were talking a lot about the breath and like I, I was, uh, when we were doing a lot of the practice, I'm talking about the inhales and the exhales. So that's actually something I like to use with my affirmations. I like to link breath with a lot of my meditations. Uh, and obviously my yoga practice is very much linked with breath. But when I'm doing affirmations, a lot of the time I'll do it with my breath. So inhale, I am, exhale, steady, right? And so I repeat this cycle with, uh, with my breath. And for those of you that have really busy minds like I do, having an affirmation to focus on or, or something like that, that's like a, like a focal point in your mind actually makes meditation easier, right? Because instead of the thoughts, when you're focusing on the words, I am, calm, I am steady, I am whatever, <laughs> whatever it may be for you that day. Um, it can help kind of get you into that cycle of meditation and awareness and steadiness. So yeah, very good question, uh, Madison. And um, yeah, whatever the affirmation, like a lot of the times I, I read a few, um, a few verses today and I'll read one of those kind of things before I meditate to help kind of ground me as well, or, you know, set my intentions for that, for that day or that meditation. Um, and if anyone's interested, sorry, this is the book I read from. It's called Embers by Richard Wagamese. And he is an amazing, amazing Canadian author. Uh, and this is his book of poetry. I read from it all the time. So if you're looking for a good one. Thank you. Um, my last, oh, let me just see. That may have been a thank you. Oh yes, they love the end. 
the answer. Um, last question for me, and then I think we're, we're maybe a minute or two over. Um, how, if you have kids or like, have you taught them? How do you broach that? And do you see that it has benefits for younger people? Absolutely. I do have kids. I have, uh, I have two little girls, two vivacious little ladies. Um, and for me, I, I integrate them into my own practice. So I actually, like, if you go on my, my Instagram page, you'll see videos of my daughters practicing along, along with me, they'll hop in the video and then they'll walk away. Um, but I've actually used like these meditation, um, practices to help my kids with, you know, kids have so much on their plate right now, especially, especially right now, um, that without, you know, making them into little yoga robots or something like that, I just kind of integrated in the moment. Like if we're having a stressful moment, I, we will stop and we will grab hands and I will be like, Izzy, breathe with me. Or I'll hold her close and I'll say, breathe with me. And, and then we do like, we'll do the counting. Let's count. Let's breathe in two, three, four, out two, three, four. So I think that, and then, you know, we just kind of, as far as physical, like yoga practice, I just kind of make it fun. I think as a parent, I want to model good lifestyle choices for my children. And so I do yoga in the living room. Like they we will go on bike rides and workouts. So I kind of just kind of integrate it in that way, right? But there's, if you're looking for resources, like I'm a teacher, so I have stuff to work from. If you're looking for resources, there are a ton out there. And if you need any recommended, feel free to, to message me on Instagram or email me. The, the girls know how to get in touch with me and I'm more than happy to share. Thank you. Um, that was great. I, yeah, I have some, some little humans who probably could use with a, learning how to breathe sometimes. I think we all could in certain situations. So I, I appreciate that. There's um, a collective just, need right now for it. <laughs> so absolutely. Um, okay. So I think we are a little past 8.30, so I'm just going to, to wrap it up. Um, and so I do want to take the opportunity to say thank you, obviously, Heartfelt thank you um, for to everyone who's taken part in the evening and especially to Danielle. Um, this has been just so needed and um, and great. So um, thank you. Uh, and then also another really big thank you to Alberta Blue Cross for supporting our What the Health series here. Um, we will, in fact, be having more of these lovely talks in the new year. So uh, if you follow us on social media, you'll, you'll see the posts. Um, we will have one in January, I think, a Wednesday or a Thursday, sort of near the end. So thank you again, everyone, for coming um, and have a, a lovely rest of your evening. Thank you all. <laughs> Good night. And all the love is pouring in. And thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Hi, Rebecca. <laughs> Thank you, Danielle, for everything. Oh, there we go. Unmute myself. You're welcome. Oh, look, my people are home. It's just in the nick of time. Just in time. They went. Uh, they went skiing today. Yeah. Oh, like in the mountains. Nice. Is Rebecca actually there? Is that actually her? Uh, it's her picture. I'm not sure. Is she's listening? Maybe. Perfect. If she is, hello! <laughs> <laughs> She's usually around.